Okay, so we'll start uh, a discussion about uh, fintech profitability and uh, Valentina, I know that uh, uh, it was a tough period maybe in a startup fin uh, financing and uh, maybe a couple of bad months, some dry spell here, there. And uh, uh, I wanted to ask you what's your outlook for uh, next year and of course to maybe uh, try to uh, tell us more about uh, what you are planning at the Fortech Investments in terms of deal, deal flow and uh, if you are still ready to invest a lot in startups. Yeah, so hi everyone, very happy to be here. I, I think it's the only time I can say that I'm the unicorn in the room because <laughs> uh, basically I'm the only one in my domain here uh, as I noticed at the conference. So uh, very happy about that, uh, to be able to spend some time, uh, some time with you guys. So Valentin Philip from Fortech Investments, we're based in Cluj. It's a private fund uh, funding startups from Romania to the USA. So basically we don't have any regional, um, let's say, constriction. Mm -hmm. And uh, the idea for us is to invest in seed uh, and pre-seed startups. Uh, and uh, fintech is definitely one of the domains that we're interested in. Uh, we invested already here and we have active, uh, let's say, conversations with startups. Indeed, uh, 2023 has been a dry spell for most of the uh, of the early stage investments, but not only. Mm -hmm. uh, this is due to multiple reasons. Of course, there are uh, funds that are navigating to the second fund, and they are now just in the transition, which has an impact uh, on their ability to invest. Here in Romania. Yeah, yep. mostly in Romania, but not only. Uh, also, at the same time, the number of startups that have been created uh, has slimmed down quite a lot. And also at the same time, I would say that the landscape for fintech overall is very slim in Romania. And we were just discussing previously, I think, four or five startups uh, as compared to 550 that uh, we saw earlier. It's definitely yeah. a, a big difference. When it comes to 2024, uh, I, I believe that the dry spell is going to continue for a bit, but uh, the pressure is there for the funds to deploy their funds. Uh, the pressure is there for uh, innovation to actually happen. And if funds don't invest in startups and if banks don't uh, open the door for startups, innovation will take a longer time to happen. So uh, 2024, I think, is a year of pressure. Uh, and we will see how each and every actor will respond to it. We're very open to invest. We still have a lot of funds available. Uh, 2024 is definitely one of the years in which we want to support new startups for our portfolio and, of course, the ones that are already there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Got it, thanks. Cosmin, you are in the middle of the fundraising game right now and uh, I know uh, we were... Uh, Telling that this uh, dry spell uh, was at least uh, uh, visible for uh, 2023. How do you feel it now, uh, and how will you navigate the uh, lack, maybe, of funding or not the same level of uh, in funds that are flowing in, into startups? It's actually uh, funny. Uh, now, just to give context. I wear two hats. I'm also an investor. I'm vice president of Tech Angels, which is the biggest uh, angels network in Romania. Uh, and uh, I did invest in uh, more than 20 startups since 2016 up to now. Uh, so besides that, I'm also a founder of, of iFactor and we are fundraising. So uh, actually having these two, two hats uh, puts me into a very interesting perspective because uh, it's uh, it's kind of a mixed feelings. When it comes to startups pitching us at Tech Angels, I have to take some decisions which are uh, actually from uh, um, based on some metrics which are, of course, uh, determined by the economic downfall and all the, the crisis that we see around. Uh, from the other perspective, uh, being a founder, I can see, especially in the fintech space, I can see the dynamic and the need of funding of the capital risk so that actually uh, needs to be able to deploy to market innovative solutions into financial services. 
For us, uh, I guess uh, my position gives me uh, quite a mature uh, way of looking into things and uh, being able to actually spend a lot of time with investors. For me, it's much easier to understand and navigate the, the VC space. Therefore, what I can tell you is that, for example, Eastern Europe has some particularities today. Uh, Western Europe has other particularities today. UK has other particularities, and then in the United States, it's uh, totally different. So you now don't have such a, a homo hom homo homogen, how do you say it? homogeneous <laughs> uh, 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 landscape from the behavior of, of the VCs. And then um, also it's very important the fact that indeed, like Valentin said, uh, we have two, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a twofold problem. One is that, uh, uh, and we don't know if it's driven by the crisis or, or it's driven by the lack of funding. Uh, we don't have necessarily so many uh, new startups and we don't have actually mature founders to, especially in the business uh, field, domain experts. Uh, uh, starting now a new new endeavors, so this is one thing. And then we we don't know if this is happening actually because of the lack of funding, because most of the Romanian funds already consumed their first fund, they are now raising the second fund, or it's actually because of the 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 crisis and the the fact that uh, the deployment of funds it's a little bit more difficult. So uh, you see, now uh, founders. Uh, Situation is extremely uh, delicate. You need to understand ten times better than it was uh, before the actually before the Ukraine war, and uh, probably uh, with a multiplicator of extra, extra two, so twenty times better than before the pandemics. You need as a founder to understand how do you need to raise, okay, in thanks. order to succeed. Uh, Valentin, you said that uh, you invest in fintech and uh, you've invested in uh, fintech startups in Romania. How do you evaluate the scalability and uh, likelihood of success for fintech? I mean, it is, is it different from other tech startup when you are looking at fintech? Uh, what uh, from through what lens are you looking at fintechs versus other startups? I guess. Um Fintech startups resemble healthcare startups in the area of regulation. So if you're investing in a fintech startup, you need to first see what type of regulation they need to adhere to and to see if that will have a definite impact on the, let's say, the timeline and the runway that they would need until they would uh, become commercial. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is a very important aspect that we look at. Then we look at their engagement with their customer. Uh, for us, it's very important that we have startups in our portfolio that are B2B oriented. So that can mean that their end customer is, uh, for instance, an, an SME, but also at the same time, uh, it can be a bank or any other um, institution. But the idea is that we don't necessarily look for uh, fintechs that are oriented B2C. So this is another way to differentiate if they're um, well suited for our portfolio. And also at the same time, when it comes to engagements, we're, we're looking towards engagements that they already have with future customers. So if we're looking at pre-seed, we're looking at pilots, for instance, with banks. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we're looking at seed, late seed, series A, uh, then we don't necessarily invest in Series A, but by the time that they get to Series A, they should have a uh, few customers and in deployed uh, manner. And also, ideally, by Series A, they should be international customers uh, and international... Do you have any relation. threshold in terms of MLR? Um, from this perspective, I would say that um, 20 to 100K mm -hmm. would be the interval uh, that we would look at uh, MRR. Uh, of course, when they are past the pilot stage and so on. So when they actually have uh, revenues, this would be the interval that we would be interested in. Okay, uh, I mean, iFactor is quite... Uh, uh, well-established fintech in, in Romania, so it's not uh, new. So I would ask you maybe, given the fact that VCs are showing more cautious in their investments, and uh, are you placing a greater uh, emphasis on uh, profitability at this stage of your business? I mean, 
you have MRR, I guess, but the uh, profitability is different. And uh, how much time we have? Three, four hours. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, <laughs> well, uh, we are an established uh, fintech. First of all, the order, uh, the the first order uh, of words is uh, pivot. Mm -hmm. So uh, we did it also because uh, we started as a marketplace uh, where we were actually uh, generating revenue out of uh, fees. Uh, but uh, we soon realized that uh, we have some, um, some limitations in order to be able to grow, th to, to grow the, 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 the model. And then we started to we pivot it immediately. Uh, uh, then um, uh, now we were entered into a new phase of the startup where we have this product that we are selling to banks. It's a SaaS tool, so this is quite uh, new and uh, uh, it's also novel for the market. Uh, that's one thing. So pivoting is uh, extremely important in any kind of startup. Then, uh, because you're facing the market and the market punches you, you know, and then you you understand how you have to do things better. Uh, then. Um, Another thing, it's extremely important when it, in, in terms of profitability, it's, for example, in, as I mentioned previously, it's very important to know how to navigate and what to expect when you're raising. It's extremely important. So in terms of profitability, uh, it's always, uh, you know, that startups, they never build up uh, budgets of, in, uh, of revenues and expenses. They you have burn rate. <laughs> they, uh, they actually burn the money. So uh, it's very important how to set up and how resilient you are as a startup to reduce the burn rate in these times. And that actually gives you into the, into the position where probably revenues might be enough for you, mm -hmm. so you're profitable, but it doesn't mean that you're uh, appealing for VCs. Appealing for VCs is when you're burning like, like crazy, but that burn makes, in, makes sense and it has enough fundamentals that you're growing the company very fast. So basically it's always a, 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 a game of, of metrics and numbers and analytics. And for example, in our case, we had to face in January a negative runway. We were out of the investors' money. So in that moment with, with our colleagues, uh, we started, I have Christina from marketing here. She was into, uh, into that space where we had to understand what do we do with the budgets of the marketing? We reduced them. We started to reduce very much the burn rate. And then uh, we decided if to go to raise in January, that would have placed us into a very difficult position. Uh, probably not raising that would uh, have killed the startup already by now, or start selling. And then we actually increased and we went very, very fast into, into customers. A good thing is that uh, uh, we had a good adoption and we have uh, already a few big customers, also international. So now we are in a very good position to raise. And mm -hmm. we do have VCs who are looking to us. We are in a, in a situation where we can actually pick the investors that we would like to have on the table. And um, that's uh, the best strategy that you can have, I guess, in our case. But everybody should look into their own kitchen. Okay, thanks. Uh, Valentin, uh, first of all, I wanted to know if uh, have you been more cautious uh, this year? Uh, I mean, you told us that uh, in general the landscape and the VCs are being more cautious and they are not uh, easily placed money and fund uh, different type of startups. But uh, what about you as uh, Fortech Investments and uh, could you share some of your plans for 2024 and maybe to uh, for startups that are watching us to, to know what to expect from a, a fund in Romania? Yeah, so definitely 2023 has been a year of caution. At the same time being um, in the period in which we definitely want to invest our funds, uh, we're still very open and willing and doing as much as we can to find the right opportunities. So that for us has meant being at events, um, just like this one. Of course, this is with a different purpose, but mm -hmm. uh, trying to find uh, startups that we can collaborate with, trying to find other investors that we can collaborate in, 
uh, co-investing, for instance. So from that perspective, even though we looked uh, with more caution or with um, a more critical eye, I would say, not necessarily with more caution, but with making sure that what the startups are presenting is actually something that we would believe would happen. And also by utilizing uh, experts like the ones that have been in this room for the past two days to bounce uh, information and to see if this is something that the overall ecosystem would see as viable. So I think from this perspective, it's very important to see how we can collaborate. And for instance, us as investors, we could support the fintechs and the startups that are here or want to interact with the audience here and the audience being a partner in validating the startups that we, uh, we support. So I think this collaboration is very important and this is one of the reasons for for which I wanted to be together with you uh, in this past two days. Uh, when it comes to uh, finding startups, as I said, we don't have um, a region that we necessarily focus on or we don't have a local uh, focus. So from this perspective, we're trying to invest in startups that are across borders. So from mm -hmm. that perspective, uh, our intention is, of course, to try and bring startups here in Romania that have made it outside as well, or that at least have the knowledge and the experience of being in a more mature ecosystem, but they are still young, but with mature, star mature uh, founders, uh, with the learnings of that ecosystem, so that can have a very important role for uh, the Romanian landscape, let's say. Uh, so from that perspective, next year, we're still going to go. We went to the Baltics, for instance, quite a lot this year. We participated in three conferences there, and we have a lot of partners there that we co-invest with. So from that perspective, we're going to continue that. Uh, and this, in turn, is uh, an opportunity for the startups in Romania as well, mm -hmm. because that means that we are a partner that can uh, promote them outside of Romania and it gives them exposure. So from that perspective, I think it's an opportunity. And also when it comes to our intent, we usually try to invest in around eight startups in a year. So next year we have eight new tickets that we okay. want to write for new startups. And hopefully we'll find them as soon as possible. Okay, thanks. Uh, very shortly about, because you already mentioned that uh, our local fintech ecosystem is quite slim and we have, uh, of course, fewer uh, fintechs than the Israeli fintech uh, ecosystem, but why do you think that is not uh, well developed and at least until now we have at a nascent uh, fintech association, three years old, but uh, what do we miss here? We miss the courage of people from banks, corporations to go and start a startup. So we need that courage uh, because otherwise we won't have experts that actually create the right solution while understanding the problem. Mm -hmm. The idea of having students creating uh, the new unicorn that's actually going to go in production and actually having an impact I think it's a fallacy. So it's very good to invest as early as possible, exactly as we saw in Israel as well happening. But if we want to kickstart what we're doing, we need people that have experience and that get supported and get the courage to do it. Uh, I think this is paramount to, to be able to have more, more startups there. And also at the same time, I think the potential customers need to be more open towards collaborating with these startups. So as long as the gates are closed, we won't be able to have innovation coming from startups because they will get discouraged mm -hmm. at the first interaction with the bank. They go into a bank, the um, negotiation or the compliance or anything takes three years, they're dead by that time. So I cannot provide money for three years for that startup to live. I can provide money for one year, one year and a half, but in that one year and a half something has to happen for me mm -hmm. to be able to provide more runway. Otherwise, they will still be at the gates and I will say goodbye and good riddance. Yeah, very interesting response here. Okay, uh, Cosmin, for the last question, uh, I would uh, 
uh, ask you for an advice if you have some kind of uh, tips and tricks for uh, other Romanian fintechs uh, planning to raise funds in the coming months. Now, you, uh, Edison said you have 1,000 ways to fail and only one to get it right, you know, so that's actually the case today of uh, fundraising. Meaning that uh, uh, for the founders, my advice is that to exactly like in the previous panel, they have to do their homework in main, mainly all the spaces of, of the startup. So from the value prop that they deliver to market, to regulations, to everything, so it's the same with the fundraise. You need to understand exactly who are the funds who, are, who have appetite to invest in this moment. Which of them are the funds that are uh, eloquent to you and they actually have a good th uh, a fit on their investment thesis against whatever you are delivering. And then uh, it's also a matter of geography, it's a matter of industry, it's a matter of technology, it's a matter of so many things. You need to get all this shit put together so that you understand very well how do you actually tackle this. And one piece of advice for companies that are fundraising is that you need to make this uh, the, the, the best sales funnel that you can do because uh, in early stages, at least pre-seed and seed, uh, investor is your, actually your customer, in fact. You know, so even if you're looking properly to customers to get revenues, which this is just a metric to be able to deploy the innovation further and further and get revenues and make it more and more appealing. But you need to understand what is the north star of the startup, where do you want to grow? And uh, with that being said, without uh, risk capital, you can't do it. In, in mm -hmm. today's prices in development and everything, it's just you can't do it. And one more thing, indeed, uh, we need more we need more uh, corporate people, uh, especially bankers, that would become more risk resilient, not such risk adverse that they, they are today, in conjunction with understanding what is the difference between brick and mortar and innovation startups. Because without that being understand, uh, understand it, uh, it's impossible to actually uh, do any kind of endeavor. Okay, thanks a lot. So very two strong uh, messages for ba bankers to start uh, uh, doing startups and uh, be more risk seekers, let's say. So very interesting messages. Thank I you recruited, for, that. Uh, for my startup, I recruited three very senior bankers from vice president and board members of different banks, not in Romania, in, from, other, from other countries. Mm -hmm. And also I hired, in, uh, meanwhile I hired also people from banks. So it's extremely important if you want to really tackle financial services to have people who understand them. Good advice. Thank you guys for being here and Thank for sharing for all the information. Thank you.